Thank God they didn't say the world's most prettiest phone. Hey guys, welcome back to Vision All Access. And yes, today we're talking about Google's most recent Pixel event. So, sorry I haven't been able to get this out, video out to you guys now, giving you my thoughts and impressions on the event and the devices presented, but it, there's just not enough hours in the day, so I reserve this time to do a video to let you guys know my thoughts and opinions on if you're looking to pick up uh, Google's newest flagship devices. So a little disclaimer here, I am gonna harp on that Pixel 3 XL because I think it's atrocious. I think it's one of the worst design notches that they could have possibly done, but I do understand the reasoning for why there is that much notch real estate on there. In fact, instead of calling it a notch, maybe I should call it oversized phone cleavage. <laughs> anyway, let's dive into the specs. Greatest thing about these phones is that with the exception of the battery life, uh, you're getting pretty much exactly the same hardware in both of these devices. So we got a 5.5 inch screen for the smaller version and a 6.3 inch respectively. Snapdragon 845 and four gigs of RAM on both. So four gigs of RAM does seem a little bit lackluster uh, considering Android isn't as optimized as say Apple devices. But at the same time, this is a stock Android device with practically no bloatware on it. So yeah, we're just gonna have to take it how it is. Battery life, uh, so really nothing special there. The camera is a really big thing with these phones. We're talking 12.2 megapixels uh, with an f1.8 aperture. So it's pretty nice aperture gonna let in a lot of light and optical image stabilization. Now, as we switch to the front of the device, Google decided to pair up those cameras by giving us two front-facing eight megapixel shooters, uh, one standard, one wide angle. So those selfies are going to be able to encompass a lot more detail, a lot more people. I think this is a great move personally. So the phone comes in three colors. We got clearly white, just black, and pink. No, Maddie, it's not pink. But it's pink, Daddy. Well, Google calls it not pink. Well, then Google's stupid because it's pink. So, when the Nexus was a prime device, the camera was always lackluster. The best comments you get from a reviewer was always, this is the best Nexus camera so far. This is the best camera we've ever seen on a Nexus. It could never compare to the Apples and Samsungs. However, Pixel is completely different. This is why it's a more premium priced phone and a more premium flagship. Even the Pixel 2 released a full 365 days ago, roughly. It still sports one of the best cameras in the business and the Pixel 3 takes it to the next level. Portrait mode is outstanding on these phones. It has very, very good uh, detection of the edges, uh, which definitely gives it a leg up over pretty much everyone else's uh, portrait modes. And you gotta keep in mind, this is happening with one shooter. One shooter on the back is giving you a perfectly awesome bokeh effect on those portrait photos. This is insane. Every other phone is focusing on more cameras, extra depth sensing. Google is using its AI technology and packing it right into this phone to give you the most incredible camera shots that you can probably hope for without switching to a DSLR. Once again, this is just my opinion, but I think it's an opinion pretty much shared by a lot of YouTubers out there. Now we're going to get into two of my favorite, favorite features of this phone. First one is what I think every phone, every smartphone should have this feature, front firing speakers. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. There's a few, you know, quite a few people out there that, you know, a smartphone is just a resource device but for people like myself. So I'm the type of person that likes to use my phone for content consumption. 
and front firing speakers, having the sound point right towards you, it just seems like such a no brainer. And I don't know why a lot of these companies aren't getting it. So the Pixel devices also come with, of course, USB Type-C as is the norm, with the exception of other devices. Yeah, pretty much every phone's going USB Type-C. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Apple. Get with it. Oh, but we like being proprietary. Screw proprietary. That's right, I'm saying it. Get USB-C on all the things. I'm quoting MKBHD right now. Matt Black all the things and USB Type-C all the things. I got you, buddy, Semper Fi. <laughs> Don't worry because you got another medium to charge these phones. Wireless charging. That's right, even though these phones sport the same kind of look as the Pixel 2, which did not include wireless charging, but you are getting wireless charging on this phone. They did kind of a textured glass in the back to still give it that look and aesthetic that they've been going for for the last, you know, two years but this is a smart move. Now, it does seem like the Pixel is definitely checking off all the boxes here, but there is a feature that's still missing, and it's not huge to me, but I think it's definitely something people should consider. No headphone jack. The 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is done, it's gone, it's gone the way of the dinosaur. Lots of devices are going this way, it's kind of the new norm, so does it hurt it a little bit? Yeah, probably, considering they used to make fun of uh, people like Apple for starting this whole trend, but now everyone's following suit. Now when it comes to wireless charging on this phone, you're gonna get a little bit extra help if you're willing to shell out some extra cash with a new Pixel stand. Now to the naked eye, this stand is just gonna look like any other wireless charging stand that you can pick up for a variety of costs, but there is something that makes it kinda cool. This dock actually enables the phone to still use the Google Assistant essentially turning into like a mini hub. So you can, even though the phone's wirelessly charging, without touching it, you can use, you know, the key phrase to ask it pretty much anything, just like you would any traditional Google Home or Google Home Mini. One more thing. That's right, you're not just getting the phones. Google also dropped on us some pretty impressive hardware that I'm just gonna lightly touch on. Uh, we got the brand new tablet from Google, as well as a brand new Google Home Hub. Let's talk about the hub first. If you're into all that smart home tech, you can actually use this as a centralized hub, you know, keep it anywhere you want to interact with all those devices. Kind of like mission control for all your smart homes. Now keep in mind this Google Home Hub is only a seven inch screen, so it's not super huge, but does match the aesthetic of like the Google Home Mini and Google Home devices. So if you already have those devices in the home, this will nicely complement your decor. If you wanna know some more about it, I'll put a link down below where you can learn some more about that particular device. Next, we're gonna kick it over to what I think is a beautiful, beautiful premium tablet. Uh, we're looking at the Pixel Slate. Also, just the fact that they're calling it something different than a tablet. I personally think that we have gone with the word tablet for too long. Slate, something new, something refreshing. I hope it doesn't get overused. But the big deal about this is that it's not an Android tablet. Literally, it's not. It's running Chrome OS. And thanks to last year's update, Chrome OS is now able to work with Android apps. So this is a pretty awesome development, I find. I haven't really seen much information on them. You know, I've kind of kept tabs here and here, but here's what I know. Uh, has a premium feel, about seven millimeters thick, no headphone jack here either. Uh, it's got a power button, and also doubles as a fingerprint sensor, front firing speakers as well. So it's pretty uh, loaded. Unfortunately, the other thing that's loaded is the price. So if you want to know more about the Pixel Slate, I'll drop a link down at the bottom. So you pick up the regular Google Pixel 3 for just a dollar under a thousand dollars Canadian. Or if you're feeling really luxurious and have over a thousand dollars burning a hole in your pocket, God knows I don't, you can pick up that Google Pixel 3 XL for eleven twenty nine dollars Canadian. Ah! Yeah, I know, it's a pretty big chunk of change. So all together guys, that's our look at Google's event and everything that dropped. What do you think? Are you a fan of these new Pixel devices that have just been launched? Are you picking one up? Let me know down in the comments. And also don't forget to connect with me on social media all the way down here. I do post a ton of content on Instagram, Twitter, 
as well as Facebook, trying to keep it up daily. Uh, videos are scarce and far in between because they take me a long time to actually edit and create. So if you're looking for fresh content, definitely keep it tuned there because I drop it as I hear it. Thanks for tuning in to Visual Access. Have a good one. Hey. Hey, cool pink phone. What do you want, Google? It's a bloody pink phone.